Let's get the lowdown on the Wyoming Cowboys. Ryan Thorburn, he's the Wyoming beat writer for the Casper Star Tribune. Kind enough to join us. Ryan, thanks for joining us, man. How are you? I'm doing well. Looking forward to uh, getting the season started. Absolutely. Well, Craig Bull, I mean, Illinois has had some hard non-conference opponents uh, from the group of five level, got knocked off by UTSA last year. Uh, USF a couple of years ago knocked him off twice in a row. Um, so Illinois scheduled some tough G5 opponents here. And, and Craig Bull obviously has a great history. He's won three FCS championships in North Dakota State before coming to Wyoming. Um, so catch us up to speed. Illinois fans that don't know a lot about Craig Bull in Wyoming. How has he impacted that program and, and what is the program he built? Well, this is his ninth year already at Wyoming. And that ties in with uh, Lloyd Eaton for the longest tenure by a head coach in Wyoming history, which is 129 years. So, you know, I think he brought stability. Obviously, he feels like he's a good fit at Wyoming. Um, obviously, Wyoming's athletic director is patient and wanted that, you know, run first style. Um, you know, fans at times get tired of it. You know, since Josh Allen went to the NFL, the quarterback play at Wyoming has really been subpar although their running game continues to, to make, make hay despite that fact. But, you know, I, I just think that style of play is something that fits Wyoming. And, you know, he's not going to give up on winning a Mountain West championship. And that's really all that's left for him. You know, it, it's hard to, for Wyoming to get back to their glory days of the 60s in this era of football. I think people know that. I think people realize one of the reasons why he's the longest tenure coach is – you know, great coaches they've had in the past, including Joe Tiller going to Purdue and going to a Rose Bowl at Purdue, tend to move on. And that's not just Wyoming, that's most group of five schools. So I think there's this kind of weird balance where they appreciate Craig Bull and he's a Wyoming guy and he's not going anywhere. And when he came, left North Dakota State, a, a lot of national media are like, wow, why is he going to Wyoming? He could have went to a number of Big Ten schools. But at the same time, they're really thirsty for something beyond the six and seven and eight wins and and winning a minor bowl game. I think they'd really love a Mountain West championship. And it on paper, this is not the team to do that. But at the same time, last year's was thought to be the team to do that and really underachieve. So it's a third youngest team in the country. They had a lot of turnover because of the portal. And it's really a great un unknown for Wyoming going into this game, which maybe could help them. Yeah, I, I think it's always interesting. Like Illinois fans talk about, hey, just get to bowl games every year. Six to eight wins will be happy. Um, but I think in five, six years, if that happens, you want more, right? And that seems to be where Wyoming's at. Uh, but the big offseason storyline here, Ryan, is all the transfers, 15 transfers out of the program, including their top two quarterbacks. Uh, so they had some talented guys there. Their leading rusher, kid from Chicago, their leading receiver goes to Texas, five starting defenders leave. So what led to that? And obviously, how does it impact the program this year? Yeah, I think there were a lot of factors that led to that, you know, and a lot, and to Bull's credit, you know, he's had a great developmental program. They had the most Mountain West guys on NFL rosters last year, even more than Boise State and San Diego State. So they have an eye for talent and developing that talent. And if you're a Wyoming fan, you're a little bit nervous knowing that, a lot of those guys that transferred are at power five schools now. So now are you developing talent for yeah. two years to go to the power five instead of three or four years to go to the NFL. So I think that's, that's something that, you know, they're still going to go through the high schools. They're going to recruit high school players, but one thing they did and they really had to is they used the portal on the other way and added some players, something that they weren't really planning to do until they had all that tumult and so it's going to be a balance of developing players and then filling in holes with the portal. And, you know, they have a, a Michigan state linebacker, they have a Mississippi cornerback uh, and they made a trade essentially with Utah state at quarterback. So uh, it's just, it's just going to make the off season more exciting, I guess, and more stressful for Wyoming fans, but all add all that together. And it's really an unknown Wyoming team. And, and, you know, like I said, it's the third youngest team, um, what happened last year, I think it was the third oldest team, and then they got off to a rocky start in Mountain West play, dropped a couple games they probably shouldn't have in Mountain West play. And I think a lot of those super seniors and seniors, you know, that really came back to win the Mountain West championship, once that was out of reach, I think there was maybe, uh, you know, not the greatest locker room situation between 
you know, the young guys and the old guys who, you know, didn't get their goal reached. Yeah. The one thing I noticed, they just released their depth chart is uh, 12 underclassmen uh, as its starters. Now I know some of those might be red shirt guys, but uh, that that's certainly a young team. Uh, but Craig Bull, like Brett Bielma did not announce a starting quarterback. Uh, Illinois, I would be shocked if it is not Tommy DeVito, the transfer quarterback. Are you the same way you expect Andrew Peasley, the Utah State transfer, to be the starter? Yeah, I, I think I wrote that exact paragraph moments ago from the press conference that, you know, both coaches are playing this cloak and dagger, but pretty much everyone is expecting Andrew Peasley and DeVito to go at it. You know, transfer guys, experienced guys, you know, Wyoming well, I mean, as a guy – who's wearing number 17, who is six foot five and 240 pounds uh, named Evans Svoboda. And he looks like, you know, who, but he has a lot of developing to go. I just can't imagine them starting any of the quarterbacks, you know, for, that are not Andrew Peasley because he's been at Utah state for four years. He's taken snaps in big games, granted coming off the bench, but these other guys, this would be their first game on the road in the big 10. I just don't see it. What what does Beasley bring to uh, Wyoming? I, I see his rushing stats are are phenomenal, uh, and and obviously, you know Wyoming for for fans that don't know they love to run the football. So see, he seems to fit that. Yeah, I think what they're hoping he brings, and he's not a big guy like they've typically had. Both quarterbacks last year were big, and obviously Josh Allen's big. They hope Svoboda turns into that next big guy. He's not big, but he is efficient and more accurate, or at least that's that's the belief. They want to run the ball. You know, they're going to use two and three tight ends. They're going to use a fullback. They're going to do whatever it takes to run the ball three, four yards at a time. They're going to be patient. But they think Peasley can complete those passes that that running game sets up. Whereas last year, you know, they had a kid named Isaiah Nayor who they developed into a five-star talent. And he's now at Texas. Unfortunately for him, he's out with an ACL. But both quarterbacks last year, when they were in obvious passing downs, everybody in the stadium and the opposing defensive coordinator knew it was going to Nayor, and he still had, you know, 12, 13 touchdown catches. So this year, I think it's going to be, you know, more play action. They're going to use the tight ends in the passing game, and Peasley will be able to hit them in a more accurate way than the other two guys did, just bombing it down to, to Nayor last year. You mentioned Wyoming uh, and, and their kind of offensive identity, uh, kind of smash mouth, kind of like what Brett Bielma likes to do. I know Bielma and Bull know each other pretty well, but who are some other playmakers we need to look out for on Saturday? Well, the featured player is going to be Titus Wynn, the running back. Last year, he was, you know, rotated with Xavion Valade, who was a super se- or a fifth year senior that is now at Arizona State. Valade is actually Wyoming's second all time leading rusher. You know, he's long graduated from Wyoming. I thought he would go to the NFL and just give the draft a shot. Um, but it clearly, you know, if he would have came back, in my opinion, to be the all-time leading rusher in Wyoming history, I think Titus Swin would have bounced and he would be a prominent running back at a big school. So Titus Swin is very talented. You know, he uh, really dominated the Utah State game last year. Utah State won the Mountain West and Wyoming hammered them just to show you what a strange season they had last year uh and he's going to be the featured guy their number two guy dewyan mcneely is not going to play in this game wyoming has struggled to keep players healthy during fall camp i think that's as big an issue as anything that illinois is going to present um they've lost a starting defensive end and a backup defensive end and they were thin there anyway um they lost one of their most experienced wide receivers and gunner gentry for the season so uh it all those factors, you know, not being able to rush the passer maybe and not maybe having enough targets. I think you're going to see Swin all day long. He's got to have a huge game for them to win. Defensively, Brett Bielma has mentioned how long Wyoming is. And you look at the depth charts, the last 6'3", a linebacker, 6'4", 6'5", in the defensive line. What's kind of the identity of the Wyoming defense and, and who are some of those playmakers? Yeah, like I mentioned, they lost two key defensive ends already to injury. And then that's on top of you know, Garrett Crawl, a super senior, is now with the Jaguars. And then they had three guys transfer from that spot, two to power five schools. So defensive end is really their kryptonite right now. They have, you know, a couple guys they feel good about, but that's about it. And even those guys don't have a lot of experience. So the strength of their defense is right up, right up the right up the middle. You know, it's uh I think nose guard, uh, Cole Goodbow. 
He wasn't on the preseason All Mountain West team, but if he stays healthy, I guarantee he will be on the postseason team. Uh, defensive tackle Jordan Bertinoli is a really good player. Those two ruined the spring game because they just dominated. You know, they dominated up front, and then they have a great tradition at middle linebacker with Logan Wilson now with the Bengals, and then Chad Muma replaced him. Just got drafted by the Jaguars, so now they're moving Easton Gibbs from the weak side to the middle linebacker. He's not as big as those other two guys, but he is faster. And I expect him to be, you know, a hundred tackle guy. So um, knowing that he's not quite the NFL prototype, those other two are, I think they feel that they've surrounded him with some faster guys and some better talent. So it's going to be more of a, a swarming situation instead of their middle linebacker making all the tackles, but he's going to make a lot of them. Ryan, just a couple of years ago, Wyoming beat Missouri. Right. Illinois knows them pretty well. They've beaten some ranked teams uh, in the Mountain West. They've made four bowl games in six years. So I know Illinois respects Wyoming coming in here. But what must Wyoming do to have a chance to knock off a power five team on the road on Saturday? I think it's kind of the simple things. You know, last year at Boise State, they almost won that game and they had just an enormous amount of unforced errors, uh, false starts, uh, holding turnovers you know they didn't really perform in a smart way during the middle eight as far as getting points when they could have had a late field goal and then giving up a, a late field goal in that middle eight so they just need to fundamentally not hurt themselves and they'll be in this game I'm not saying they're going to win it but you know Illinois and their rebuilding process they're not at the point where you know this is like when we it's not like when Wyoming went to Michigan State in 14 and Michigan State was ready to go to the playoff and that sort of thing. I mean, this is, you know, honestly a winnable power five game for Wyoming up and, you know, the 10 point spread, I think has as much to do with the great unknowns of Wyoming and the fact that usually when you play this many young players thing, good things don't happen on the road in your first game, but, you know, if they're able to cut down on, on their own self mutilation, I think they'll be in the game at least. Yeah, I think usually week one, it's about being the most disciplined team, right? Um, so, I, I mean, you look at the on paper, Ryan, a lot of people might look at Wyoming and Illinois fans might feel like, oh, we, all those transfers, we might have dodged a bullet here. Are, are they feeling more bullish inside that program to make you think like the 10-point spread is, is is a good spread? I think they uh, they feel bullish on that the locker room chemistry is better than last year. And a lot of these young guys that are listed as – freshmen and sophomores have been in the program two and three years just because of the COVID year. And they've been waiting behind guys that should have graduated, you know, a year or two before that. So they have a lot of guys that have been waiting for this. Now, you know, I think it's going to come down to Andrew Peasley. I think, can they have better quarterback play? And it's the same thing at Illinois. Both these right. teams were near the very bottom in passing and scoring points last year. And I think even though Illinois has a new offensive coordinator, it'll probably take a few times, maybe if ever, that they look like U.S., you know, the roadrunners. So, you know, I think it's going to come down to which transfer quarterback fits in with his new team the best in this game. Well, Ryan Thorburn, Wyoming beat writer for the Casper Star Tribune. Uh, thanks for the time, man, and thanks for getting us up to speed on uh, Wyoming when the Cowboys get here on Saturday. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, going to Champaign. I've never been there, and – uh you know, it should be a great trip. Uh, a lot of good uh, good restaurants here. Try them out. If you, if you get the chance, go downtown, walk around a little bit. It's a nice little college town. Yeah, that's the plan. Ryan, thank you, man. Okay, take care.